Yes, your pretty face. Hello, folks. Welcome to episode eight of The Ugly Show. That was Crunkwitch, uh, Hyper Magic. I'm a, I'm a big fan of theirs. They, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they, uh, I believe they're from Maine, but they've been doing this for quite a long time. They're a married couple grouper, I believe, or something along those lines. But you guys should look them up on YouTube. They got some uh, interesting videos. They got some great songs as well, obviously. Um, so anyway. He said, welcome to episode eight. Uh, it is World Beaters Week, so I have an interview for you guys to listen to. I think you guys will enjoy it. She did a killer job in this interview, to be honest with you. It was, my, actually, it was actually my very first interview for this podcast, um, way before it even existed. But I knew at some point I wanted to do it. I think I... This was back when I met Dina back in August. Dina, Dina Vibes in Los Angeles back in August. And... Uh, yeah, so um, she brought along this amazing makeup artist, Francesca, and we uh, we shot. Um, I don't know if you guys really have much know this about me at all or not, but um, I don't even know if I've ever really mentioned it. I think um, I think Julia, one of my uh, admirers on Instagram, brought it up once. But yes, I was when I was I went to cosmetology school some long time ago, and one of the things obviously you have to learn, or you do learn, is makeup. You know, we had this awesome makeup artist for our teacher. You know, very successful. And um, we used to make our own makeup and stuff in-house and things along those lines. But she was... Um, so I got, I, was, I got really interested in it. I, did, I wasn't drawing or painting or anything way back then. It was something I was kind of... I doodled a lot, but I didn't really do anything major. But anyway, so I always looked at when I, saw, when I saw... I never paid attention to makeup before. I never paid attention to how it was done or anything like that. This is before, like, YouTube tutorials and all that shit. And... Um, so, you know, unless you're watching your girlfriend or your parent, your, your parents, your mom do it, whatever, or your sister or whatever, do it, makeup, you're, you're really not going to pay much attention to it, you know, um, or you're doing it on yourself. Um, so, what's it called? So, uh, yeah, so I was really interested in when I seen it, because to me, it was more like you just, I, I kind of looked at it as you were drawing on people's faces, you know, you were taking shadows and you know inserting them in places and making stuff down so when i was learning to do it it was um it, it, i learned from a different perspective it wasn't just beautifying something it was like minimizing things like bigger noses or um deep eye sockets or large jaw lines and things along those lines so when i was learning all that stuff it was just, it was very interesting to me because it was like how you can create the illusion of things or beautify things or totally make something you know exist that didn't seem to exist or a little, anything along those lines and um, but it was tons of fun and I never stuck with it and I wish I had I had a friend who graduated and she did um, she went to makeup school afterwards and um, she suggested that I just go learn on my own and practice it and I never did I don't know why because I was I, I never really met people despite being around a lot of women it's tough meeting people have the patience for you to fuck around with their face and it really is and especially if you're not paying them <laughs> But, um, so, I have, it's not that I haven't dabbled in a long time, but I've had, always had this huge appreciation for it. Always watched, uh, you know, watched out for it in, in ads and advertising and paid attention to it and in beauty stuff and things along those lines and kept up with, uh, the different products and different, um, companies and whatnot. So, you know, I, I, I so I always have an idea of, of what I want and uh, along those lines and I just don't know necessarily how to do it and how to get there. But I do have a project I'm going to work on this year that involves makeup again that I want to try out because I got a couple of wonderful friends who are willing to sit there and be patient with um, with me doing it and trying it out and experimenting on them. That involves painting and makeup and whatever else. So um, anyway, that'll be coming probably toward the end of the year. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so over the years I've learned to have a huge appreciation um, for makeup and keeping up with it. And I've worked with a few makeup artists for shoots and various other reasons. And um, but there's only these two that I really, really, that I really, really enjoy enjoyed working with. And I've only worked with them each one of them once. But they've always stuck out in my mind as wonderful people, very, very talented, and with a with a huge, huge, uh, huge, huge skill sets. And um, Francesca is one of them. Oh, excuse me. What the hell's on my phone? She's one of them, and I'm fortunate I was work with her. Before then, um, 
the other person was let me see I gotta find her because I want to give you her Instagram name God there's so many fucking messages on here Jesus Christ I don't know if she uses her full name or not. That's the problem. That's why. And she does. Yeah, she uses her full name. Her name is Kai Kumale. Um, you know, well, for me, like what I look for in, it's this Kai Kumale. So just look it up. Um, there's no one that scores or fancy lettering or whatever else. But anyway, um, so what I look for, like for me personally, when I shoot, I don't use a lot of makeup artists. I like when people just do their shit because I've been shooting over the years more natural um, stuff, more people, whatever they do with themselves. Because the shoots have always been more specifically geared toward the specific model. But um, and I've kind of stepped away from, you know, forcing things and making stuff happen, which I'm going to get back into now. Um, but anyway, so when I when I look for makeup artists to to work with, um, like these two, like you, I feel like if you could say something to them, they could they could do it. Yeah, and I don't care how outrageous, how stupid, how silly it might be, that they could do it, no questions asked. And that's what you look for, even if it's stuff that I don't even know is possible. You know, they, 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 they would say yes, they could do it. You know, I've even questioned them and asked them on stuff. You ever seen this, you ever done that, or whatever you think of this? And, it, 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 you know, it's always yes. And that's what you're looking for. Even, you know, I don't know if they can really do it or not. But that's what you're looking for. And I think that's what you look for. Like, when I do photography and someone, the only thing I do not do is to two things I don't do. Professionally, I do not shoot cars. And professionally, I do not shoot um, weddings. Because weddings have way too much pressure on them. I shoot them for my friends if they just want something cheap and easy and understand that they're gonna get what they're gonna get. And I don't feel like planning. I hate. I don't. I don't. I haven't been to a lot of weddings, so I don't really pay. I don't know what the fuck goes on. So that's one thing. And cars, cars, because metal is so difficult to to light up. I would never take on uh, such a task because the equipment you need for it is, is not is not. Um, Minimal, and it's like it's it takes a lot of lighting science to figure out how to properly light a car. You do see some great shots out there, and this and that. And you know, like if you're doing certain cars certain ways and whatnot, there, there's a lot of great stuff you can do, like outdoor stuff with the lighting and everything. But if you're looking for something specific and very, very like, um, like you see what they use in car commercials, and you know, like you know, in any you know, uh, handout that you get when you go to a car dealership, or whatever that stuff is not easy. So, I do not do that so those are the two people are looking for i will not do um you know so but i will if anything else even if i've never done it before i know what i'm capable of and i know i'm basically capable of anything if i really really wanted to do it um i could yes do those two things but i wouldn't do it <clears throat> make just to make my life easier you know and so when people ask me can you do this i always say yes because <clears throat> i will find a way and i don't know whether it's um you know, I mean, that, that's the case with them or not, whatever. I mean, I'm sure they can all do it. You know, I don't know what they learned in school and whatnot necessarily, or they learned in school or whatever else. But, I mean, it, anyway, I, that's a totally fucking side note that I totally went on. I apologize. But, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a great interview. I was very fortunate to work with her. I felt very... I, <laughs> after the shoot, I felt terrible because she has a skill set and this wasn't beauty shooting or anything else. It was just the, the shoot that Dina and I did was literally on the fly. We just kind of went for it because we're like, oh, you know, let's meet because we, you know, we, 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 you know, we just always wanted to meet up. And since I was out there, why not? And it went from coffee to like, hey, well, let's just shoot. Because I love, if I can shoot, I, I, I want to shoot. And so we, um, so I have this great, <laughs> I felt terrible because I have this great uh, uh, makeup artist high skill set doing her thing whatever else I took the photos and I think I literally got no shots maybe two that was specific to what she had for makeup and it was so done on the fly and I totally wasn't even mentally prepared for it um, so that's all that was in my head to do because it was like it was a shot outside and whatever else so I felt terrible that's all I had to give her because she does she works with um, amazing uh, photographers and amazing models and do, do what does amazing shoots. So the, the offer nothing. I felt very, very. Um, I felt like my game was, <laughs> my game was down. But um, it, it happens. And um, but anyway, so we, if for her, let's just get to the interview. Um, if you read, let's see. If you've read, her work has been in. Vogue, we'll just use the big names. Vogue, multiple um, versions of Vogue magazine. Harper's Bazaar. L W magazine, um, fucking young mag, um, and many other lower. Um, I can't even hate saying lower, smaller. Excuse me, smaller magazines. So she, um, 
She, so yeah, she's talented. You've seen her work. I, I, it's it's great to know. That's one thing about her behind the scenes people. You, you don't know who's what if you've seen their work or not. And it's, it's like even when I meet people, I know most people have seen Jenna's stuff, and I know this, my work's been other places too. But the easiest way to tell them, like, oh, where do I see your work? I go I guarantee you, like you know, or I've ever seen your stuff before. I go, you most likely have because I know they have. Um, seen it before whatever if it gets brought up hasn't been brought up in a while or or anything like that but to know that you know you 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 there's that there's so much that goes on behind the scenes and meeting the people involved in that it's not just the models it's not just the product but it's people who apply that um that product and who help put together that model you know that you don't realize and you don't you know most people don't think about when they want when they look through magazines and advertisements and such so, anyway, so enough of that me babbling bullshit. So we'll just get straight to the interview, and I will speak to you guys afterwards per usual. So here is Fran Cheska Martin um, from Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, so what the hell? My head is itchy. Fucking Christ. I'm sorry. I'm, like, fucking stalling here because my head's itchy, and that's the one closest to my keyboard. Anyway, so talk to you all afterwards. Peace. See ya. So I'm gonna welcome you guys to. Well, no, we're gonna do one at a time, right? Yeah. All right. We'll welcome Francesca to. Uh, did I say it right? Yeah. Yeah. Francesca's perfect. Thank you. Okay. To World Beaters, and um, I met you today on a photo shoot because, as everybody knows, I take photos and paint people, and uh, I was very fortunate today to have you tag along with Miss Vibes over here hey. and uh, <laughs> apply your skills all the way from. Uh, New Zealand, yeah, right. so a little far away. All right, so you're going to tell me the story that you told me about when you came here, why you're here, and how well you're doing here, and your history, a little bit of history of you. Don't forget the, the gory details. Okay. Um, well, I've been living in Los Angeles for the last uh, four and a half years. I um, originally moved here from Guatemala. I was living in Guatemala for a year and a half, and then I backpacked around Central South America for six months, and then, lo and behold, I ran out of money. And so I had to come back, or I, it was either come to the States or go to New Zealand, and because I, you know, New Zealand's very, it's lovely, it's beautiful, you should definitely visit, but it's just very small, and, you know, I, there wasn't a lot there for me anymore by the time I, you know, it was up. So I came to the States, and I was working um, in an office job, um, my, my dad's company, doing, uh, exporting and importing produce specifically blueberries and asparagus and that was fine uh you know it was what it was everyone has has their you know what they're good at and and you know i was a really shitty waitress i was an okay office person you know but now you're a fantastic now i'm a makeup artist artist. yeah yeah Uh, okay so how did you get into the makeup did you go to school did you teach yourself did you watch videos did you play clown face with yourself what'd you do uh, well, I went to school in New Zealand. Um, I did makeup school there for a year and a half. I think it's a year at, at the school in Auckland called the Makeup School. And I worked on a couple of films while I was there and the TV show. Uh, and so I was doing that for for a couple of years. And then when I went traveling and I came here, the the plan was to to not be doing makeup anymore because, you know, it's not. It wasn't. My family is like, you know highest hopes for me <laughs> to be doing that so you know I, I I was taking a break and was going to try to take over my dad's company instead um, but you know while I was here in LA I was sitting at this desk job and I was just just every day just being so drained and so just lacking something creative and I have this the skill that I had previously studied in New Zealand so and I thought you know I'm in Los Angeles of all the places in the whole world like I I can't just sit here and not take advantage of this and so uh, I went back to school I went to night school uh, to learn more about prosthetics and creatures and you know, special effects and blood and all that sort of stuff. So I did that, and then it, t- it took me a year to graduate. Um, I, I and I, my my last class was a severed head class, so I made a severed head. I have this fucking severed head sitting in my wardrobe. 
Uh, which, oh, and is the class called a severed head class? It literally is. Everyone just makes severed heads of their own heads. And then, like, once... Of your own head? Of your own face. Yeah, because you have to do, like, a live cast of your fa- of your head. So, oh, shit. Like, you're really... like the, And like and, and you get to choose how you die, how long you've been dead for. Oh, and it's was, a severed head, though, but you can only... Well, well, did you... Like, was the head cut off pre or post-mortem, you know? Like, did you oh. bleed out or did you drown and then your head got chopped off? That was how I died. Hold on, so you... <laughs> in, my, in my severed head. Sorry, I don't want to... <laughs> Knock on wood, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I say that's a great way to predict your future. Um, hold on, so does your head look, the severed head looks different depending on when it's. Do you want to see photo? Up. Yeah. Sorry, I know that this doesn't help with podcasts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll find the photo for you. But yeah, so I like, there's, I had to punch hair, so the hair looked like me. It's got like three wigs in it. And um, yeah, I did my, well, when I sent the photo to my dad, he asked me if I was in a good mental state. <laughs> like literally, he. Oh my god! I'm like that, so close to. So it's all got all the white bits on it because it was meant to be frozen. Um, okay. And so you were frozen severed head. I was a frozen severed head, frozen and like where? I can. The freezer. Uh, uh, iceberg. Oh yeah, ocean, ocean okay. iceberg. Interesting. The plan was well. The plan tell was me, that okay, I tell me the whole thing then. Tell me the story how you died. Okay, so the story. Well, my girlfriend calls it Chancheska. This is what it looked like without me, the, without the wig, when I was still painting it. Oh so it's like Jesus. all modeled up and... Wow. Yeah. How long does it take you to do that? This is a month's course. No, no, to do the head. A month. Oh, fuck, really? Yeah. God damn. Yeah, and so I was like really by... So it starts out like... So it starts out, there's like, I had to do like ear casts. And then so you first have the mold and then you pour clay Your into the mold. My lips, right? But my nose is like facing. I never noticed that my nose face is like slightly left. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then you pour it into clay, and then you sculpt the injuries. So I had like these like bits of flap and stuff, and I also made these guts out of like extra silicone that were dangling down. Mm-hmm. So they were also covered in blood. And so that's how, and then like after you have the clay, it you know, then you pour like make another mold of it, and then you make you pour silicone into it, and. Um, but I can find you the parts where it shows like the gutty bits if you want to see. The gutty bits. Yeah. Well, you know, gory. Just it's I it's sculpted underneath the neck to of of the anatomy of what it should look like with the spinal um, cord, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I learned the I learned how it looks, but not the names. Okay. <laughs> so no, no, I'm kidding. I'm sure there were nicks of the image. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Story, I want to know the story how you died. Oh, okay. So, uh, it was a drug deal gone bad okay. was the situation. <laughs> and then as punishment, I didn't have the money. So I was thrown overboard. So death by drowning. And then eventually to, you know, dispose of the body, my head had to be that, you know, my limbs were chopped up. So my head was chopped off. Hold on. You were thrown overboard? Yeah. You drown and they retrieve the body story. again uh, yeah. to get rid of maybe, it? May, maybe, I, no one's asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm playing it out of my head. I'm like, okay. No, 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 it's true. Get her back. Get her back, like, yeah. No, uh, shit, I'm sorry. No, I don't, don't apologize. Hey, you. hey, you know, it, it, it's a swing on the story, the common story. Yeah. Most people would leave it there. Guess the drug dealers wanted you. To yeah. Chop you up. Maybe you so you know, everyone has like that weird stuff in their house, and that's like as weird as it goes for me. I guess it's kind of weird. Eh? A seven head of my own head. Yeah, I just have the doll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just have the doll head that I have from from Idris. I put it out for Halloween on the window last year. Nice. I don't think our landlord was impressed. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how how I came about. I started originally wanting to get more into the film industry, and then. As I've been working, I was working a lot more in the film industry. And then, here? No, like, yes, okay. in Los Angeles. It was just independent stuff. I'm not part of the union. But um, it's funny that we're doing this interview today with Dina because Dina's actually one of the main ones that like got me more doing fashion. Because she reached really? out to me. Yeah, I wasn't wow. doing as much fashion before. I didn't know that. Yeah. You feel good now, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great, though? Yeah. Awesome. So Dina reached out to me, and then we did a shoot, um, and she, you know, Dina's like, crazy to crazy creative 
and um, she had all of these looks planned and we ended up shooting in Antelope Valley and then that photo shoot ended up getting into Vogue Italia and then so because of having because of having that on my resume I've been able to you know meet a lot more people and just get all these different jobs and then it's just kind of been snowballing and I've been freelancing now for the last like 15 months I guess nice now what do you prefer more the film stuff or the the fashion I I just love telling a story I think mm-hmm. that um, you can really tell a story in both okay. mediums really well and you know there's so many different mediums to tell a story but I just love the visual of a film and I love I just I love what I love about film and and fashion it's just like both of them are, are, are slightly different in their own spheres but everybody is doing their part like everyone has like and you know, it's it's completely a, a team effort. The photographer has his job, the model has her job, the stylist, and everybody does their part. And if one link falls, it like it affects everyone. And yeah. so I just I really love being part of that team. It's like a team sport, isn't it? You know, like yeah. we all like work off each other, and then together you build this beautiful photograph. And so that's that's the same with film. And I I just love seeing that be created and I, I just get really inspired by that whole creative process of it now explain okay now the, the different uh, the difference between working on a film versus working on a fashion photo shoot is there a much of a difference yeah well uh, days for starters like much longer on a film set like I've had jobs where I'll start at 2am and finish at 8pm wow. so just long 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 days um, you know and there's like with fa- like with editorial work it, it, like it can be a long day but it's a much faster turnover the whole process because you know I've, I did a job the other day where I got the photos literally the next day already okay. edited it was already submitted and yeah. magazine had already picked it up and it was like a much faster process like there's a, um, I did a TV pilot last November and it still hasn't come out, you know? So it's yeah, like, okay. there's just like a much longer process. And so you don't really have as much to show for your work in terms of, you know, the tangible item because of how long things take in post-production and editing. Because, you know, there's so many parts and so many people involved. Yeah. And especially if it's, you know, if you're trying to get, if you're trying to get a, you know, viewed on like a network or if it's trying to be an independent film or if you're trying to submit it to a film festival, like there's just it, like it, it, the turnaround is just so much longer. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, just the amount of people that are involved can be like a lot more on film than compared to editorials. Like it'd be like five people, six yeah. people met, you know, okay. it, it's a lot smaller. Yeah. So, you know, and also with film, um, you have like a team of people. So there'll be like the key makeup artist and then like the assistant and then like, you know, so like say that there's like a, like a team of like five makeup artists. So you'll con- like consistently have backup. Whereas with editorial, unless there's like another person doing like somebody else, it's just you. So you've got to like be responsible for your shit. Like there's not going to be anyone to, you know, so you help you out, you know, whereas, um, I find that there can be like a safety net more in film. All right, so explain it in film. Now I'm kind of confused because I wasn't aware that there was, like you said, a key makeup artist. Mm -hmm. Like, so how does that work? Like, so the key makeup artist will be like the main one that'll have the job, and then you know she'll be communicating and like much more in pre-production and establishing what characters are going to look like. Yeah. And you know what the look's gonna be like. So you know, Amy and this film is gonna have her hair and ponytail all the time. So like that's her like her, you know her shtick. So like okay. of, like of character development. Okay. And you know of course like that involves the char- like the the actress or the director and producer and you know like the the wardrobe person. So that like there's a lot of people that kind of create this visual to go with this like with the script okay. of like how the character's written so the key makeup artist is like is like the the one in charge of the makeup department and so she'll be like there'll be you know especially especially on like bigger productions when they'll have second units so you know she'll be sending people over to do that thing you know that job and then also the key makeup artist normally does the you know higher tiered actresses and oh, actors. Okay, okay. so like I worked on a film in New Zealand called The Emperor we had Tommy Lee Jones and Matthew Fox on that the key makeup artist did them okay. and I was sunscreening you know <laughs> It's okay, like you know, like it's a ladder. You, I guess, you yeah. work on it. So I, you know, I was very, I was low tiered. I was working on the second unit stuff, and yeah. I was just extras. So that's kind of like how the like hierarchy system would work oh, in the makeup oh, because you can't just have the assistant go in and try. I don't know. Give Tommy Lee Jones some powder. He'd be like, Mm-mm, I already have one person because you know you. it gets well, it, too, it ends up being too many shifts. You know. Yeah. Interesting. I just learned something else today. All right, so how's the, I don't know if this is getting too personal, but with the uh, 
money. Can't, I mean, I understand it. it's an art field and everybody else needs to understand it's an art field. You know, and money's not a priority. None of this is about priority. I mean, you yeah. do what you love and you love what you do. And But where does money you know, or payment or whatever else come into play? As far, maybe not what you do and make it now, but from, you know, someone starting out to, you know, what, where can the cap off being? Like what, you know, like the big... Makeup artists. I don't know what a big makeup artist. Uh, I you know. For, I went to the Outfest Film Festival and we watched this documentary about Kevin O'Quan and he in the nineties was just yeah, I the best. Oh, yeah. Of it. yeah, I remember. And he he did a um, he was doing I think it was a music video with Janet Jackson mm-hmm. and I think I'm pretty I ninety percent sure that they said that he was earning to eighty thousand dollars a day. So you can you can earn a bundle, you know, but it's. Starting out, you just really have to be wanting to sacrifice the money, and because you know there there is money to be made in this industry. It's just it's just a matter of like being able to have a good enough skill and a good enough portfolio to back you up to, to kind of warrant to be paid. Because unfortunately, there's twenty thousand people in the city that can do my job. Yeah. And so you know, if I say no, there's ten people lined up that are going to do it for free. So you have to just kind of keep hustling and keep trying because. And just not let a, the money thing get you down because, you know, so many projects that I've worked on were were trade for print and that is what you have to do. You have to go out there and hustle and meet people and network and because you don't know who knows who yeah. or who who's going to help you to this next photo shoot or, oh, like that one model that you worked with, you know, months ago, now she's calling you for it. You know, like you just have to make sure that you're on like your best behavior at all times because you don't know who, like where that next job is going to come and what is a free job can turn into a paying job okay. like I've had a bunch of those as well because you know it, everyone wants to work with people that they trust yeah. and so many of these jobs are going to be word of mouth like uh, most of the paying jobs that I've gotten have been through other people recommending me Okay. so they're like there's jobs that I'll apply to and, and you know either get it or not but it, uh, the most reliable ones are the word of mouth jobs Makes so uh, with money I <laughs> I, you know, I'm I'm trying to figure out other ways to get money because yeah. that way I can still do this. So I've been there's like a bunch of apps that like you know Glam now like now I mean it, like instant makeup artist apps. It's kind of like Uber, but you can call a makeup artist or nail technician or hair really? you know, and they'll come to your hotel room and give you a blowout and give you lashes. I didn't and stuff. know that. So I've been doing some of that. I've also been my aunt. Um, she lives um, in a like in, in northern. I'm oh, sorry, southern Los Angeles, and um, she, her, her and her friends want to learn how to do makeup on themselves now. Now that they're aging, yeah. so uh, it was her idea to kind of do like a class, and so we're doing a class, um, awesome. and they're all gonna pay and of course, yeah, oh, that's great. So I've, I've I've just been able to try, pardon me, uh, just channel different ways to get income because. Well, that's a fun way to do it. I mean, I do the same thing where it's just like, you know, it, it, you don't, you have to do the things that you can do. Mm-hmm. And even if it's not stuff that you want to do, but it still keeps you in the same. Yeah. You know, like if I, if I was a decent waitress, I would be doing that. But yeah. I was an awful waitress. Yeah. Like if I had like skills to be like a, you know, work at a bartender, I would for sure be doing that because yeah. that is money and you get tips. Of and course. like, I would love to be doing that because then you meet people, yeah. but I've just got to work with the skills that I've got. Yeah. And to avoid going back to an office, I'm doing as much makeup as I can. Yes. And then also like I get to test out new products on people, I you know, and just try different techniques and learn really quickly. Oh, that doesn't work. That works. And yeah. just... Yeah. No, that's great though. I mean, but I mean, it, it's the, the big thing is though people need to realize too is it's a, it's an industry of you know that's very difficult and that you really you really got to love what you're doing more than mm-hmm. you know you don't get into it because of the potential outcome of money or meeting the, these pe- celebrities or models or whatever it is that you, that other people think it is, but you do it because you love it. Yeah, and you know. Maybe maybe this is going to work. Maybe it's not. But I've got to give it a hell of a try of to make sure that, you know, I did everything that I possibly could. It's because I'm, like, living in Los Angeles is such a luxury yeah. that most people in the world don't have. Well, I'm sorry, that sounded so stupid, but you know what I mean. No, but, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you no, know, like, know you. like, this is, like, such a hub for yeah. entertainment and fashion and media and just, you know, film. There's just so much going on here that... You know, right now there's a thousand things being filmed. So it's just a matter of like tapping into that and getting getting in there and just 
try hustling and because, you know. So what's your lo and behold goal with it, personally? Um, well, Besides you know, being self-sufficient as far as financial or whatever else. I, I would love to work with an agency. Um, I'll just put that out there into the universe. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to work with an agency and I'd love to either be, you know, I'd love to work with musicians and go on tour with them. And I just, I want to be out. I want to be socializing. Like, not socializing as in, like, like a like going out. I just mean I want to be like interacting with different people every day. Yeah. That's like that was something that I completely was lagging working in an office. It's just yeah. it's very it's a very stale environment. Yeah. And so I would love to be traveling for my job. I'd love to work Fashion Week. I'm going to New York um, to work Fashion Week this September. That's awesome. Um, but like in general, I'd love to be able to you know be like a key makeup artist for you know like have you, like Gucci's campaign just came out and it's just amazing. But you know so that that would be that would be one of my main goals. I also would love to work on independent films because at the like right now the kind of tr uh, track that I'm on isn't going to be to get into the union in Los Angeles and so um, my main film dreams are like diminished a little bit so I just want to try to do a lot more independent films because that way I don't have to be into the union and I still get that you know Ex creative feel okay yeah yeah okay I get you now I was going to ask who were you who did anybody really influence you like in the industry like there's the people that you look up to or you kind of just like it all and kind of pull bits and pieces for everybody because I know with me I don't there's no way I don't have specific artists of, I hate photographers you know I really <laughs> do so like there's very few that I like so I, I really like I pay attention to just the photo itself or the style mm -hmm. or whatever else That's or, or campaigns my big thing is I love campaigns like yeah. fashion campaigns have always been a huge influence you should have a look at the Gucci one that is, it was all like Star Everyone's Trek it was really? the yeah Oh, it was really, oh, and they had like the the sea monster. It's, it's just you should. It's really okay. beautiful. I will look it up. Note to self. Yeah. Sorry, we had a date by the time it's supposed to whatever. Well, um, it'll be it'll be right in season because it'll oh, be, we'll be right now. Yeah, yeah, autumn winter. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm, how do you get? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna look it up. I my, what um, what was I gonna ask you? What do you have? Like, what would you tell somebody you know who loves makeup? loves fashion or loves film or whatever else just the industry as a whole whether they want to do effects makeup or whatever what would you tell somebody who doesn't have a clue and they ask you I want, and instead they say to you I want to do what you do research is a huge one you have to know you have to know where the industry's been to know where it's going and know what's on trend and know people the fact like to know artists and like you know just Kevin O'Quan Pat McGrath like there's you know Alex Box there's just so many amazing artists out there and you just really have to know people's styles because so many of the times you'll be on jobs and be like oh can you do you know this look that was on the John Galliano. It's just like is you, you have to be aware. You have to be aware of your surroundings and also be aware of pop culture and and you know because everyone's a celebrity in yeah. Los Angeles and so you have to <laughs> you know you you've got to be like aware of you know just be in tune and not be like living under a rock because yeah. then like I'm for starters I'm a really awful awful liar and I will own that. A hundred percent, and like I like to think that it's like an okay quality, but I'm a terrible liar. So if you say like like when we were talking about um, the the mural outside, yeah. like I'm not gonna be one to lie about it and be like, oh my god, I love her, and then say something stupid like that that you'll be like, oh she's like she just doesn't know what the fuck she's saying, yeah. you know. So I, I know what you mean. I'm not gonna lie about things that I don't know, and so I just it, I need to educate myself because I'm not gonna be one. Like I was, I went to the, this like makeup convention, and there was a girl. We were at the Kevin O'Quan booth, and this girl next to me said, oh like it was like talking about him in the present tense about how like he loved how she loved like what he did recently, and he's been. Dead for the last, you know, so like it's just like it like lying doesn't help anyone in those yeah. situations where you just like you just look stupid. Yeah. So it's better not to know anyway. You learn better by yeah. not knowing. Even if you know, you always gonna learn differently from somebody else anyway. Yeah. You know, so it's always a good thing to be that way regardless, you know. I learned that. You know, when you think you're a know-it-all, you know. Uh, yeah, and like, you know, there like there's so many days where I'm just like, oh, I'm not doing anything today. So I try to use that time to research. I have so many books at home. I have like Vogue covers. I have, you know, books on, you know, special effects makeup. I just, I read as much as I can just to be informed and just, because you never know like what you're going to use and, you know, it's just, it's, I just, I just find comfort in, in knowledge. No, of course. And like I, was, I'm going to say it wrong, but there was a, at the seminar that I went to, it was um, success is when opportunity meets preparation. Yep. Okay. So, you know, I, like I can, 
be as great as makeup artists as anyone, but I need to, you know, build up my own stash of, of tools to make myself successful. Yeah. And so that's one of the ones that I really hold on to is research and learning and doing online classes and seminars and because there's just there's just course, so much to constant. learn. I mean, yeah. I did the same thing. I, I ran into that when um, <clears throat> I decided finally to go to photo school at one point just to learn how to do certain lighting and stuff. You know, my girlfriend at the time, she liked the look of fashion photography, but she didn't know anything about fashion, which was odd because she was very well dressed and everything. And I remember us going on a shoot. And the model was that she was she was shooting with was very sought after. So I went as a stylist instead, and just to support her and stuff. So as I'm styling the model, we're talking. I'm talking about same thing, fashion campaigns, mm-hmm. and you know which ones were her favorite at the time and everything else. And we're just going on and on about it. And my girlfriend who was shooting her, obviously she should have made more respect than giving her. The, but she, apparently she didn't. The model didn't think too much of her. So anyway, they were shooting whatever else and. The model started treating her like she was an assistant, like she's got her fingers, give me this, give me that. It was hilarious, which was more of my job. But the reason why, and I never thought about it until afterwards, and my girlfriend was so upset afterwards, and I was just like, I'm sorry, I didn't, you know what I mean? I was just because making small talk, making her comfortable. She goes, you know so much more about fashion than I do, you know? And I was just like, that's because I study it, and that's what's important. Now, the model, when I spoke with her, she was young. I think she was like 17 or 18 at the time, but she was very, very sought after in New York. And uh, I asked her why, how she became so successful. She goes, all I do is practice. Mm-hmm. And models don't even realize that themselves. They, like she goes, I look at magazines all day when I have, or when I have free time and I pose in the mirror and I mm-hmm. practice. So everything was so natural, you know, for her. And she understood everything. It could work in any which way. Yeah. You know, so now you're right. So it is very important to do that. I don't think a lot of people realize that. They'll just look through a few things, call it a day. Or, no, you or have to know, else. like, you, you know, and there's so much I don't know. And so, like, that's the kind of drive that I, I, I kind of feed off is to just kind of feeding that knowledge and learning as much as I can. Like, I've been watching documentaries on Netflix of, you know, just, like, vo- like British Vogue and just, just all these different things that just so I can learn more and learn more about that designer. Like, there was a, a documentary I watched the other day that was all talking all about Zach Cozen. So, like, now I've learned a little bit more. So I just need to, you know, and, like, practicing. Like, even though, like, makeup, do, like, doing makeup on yourself is a different skill to doing it on other people. So... Yeah. It's there's a lot of you know there's that whole thing right now with like social media and being insta famous and like that's very different to you know someone that's doing Milan Fashion Week so it's it's like it's still very brilliant it's it's great and there's there's definitely still an art form but you know do other people's makeup don't just do yourself yeah. because you know what your face looks like you know your like foundation color what happens if you deal with someone that's completely the opposite of you like what are you gonna do you're gonna be like well. You know, because people aren't going to hire professional makeup artists. You know, like, sorry, they want to hire professional makeup artists thinking that they can do anybody that sits in their chair. If you only know how to do yourself, that just puts you in such a tiny box that yeah. you can't get out of. Or it's, or it's a real struggle to get out of. Very true. Because I have this, I, there was a girl who asked me, she was young, I think she was just graduating in, in high school, this was recently, and she was asking me about makeup and what she should do and stuff. And I told her st- similar things, but I don't think she took me serious enough. And it's, it's like, if. You know, do you think it's a generational thing? I mean, I don't know how old you are. I'm 28. Yeah, so you you have a better understanding that like the younger, you know, people who are in their early 20s and whatnot. You seem mm-hmm. like they don't they want to just do it and make it happen, and next week they're going to be successful at it or whatever. It seems very more, much more common than it was at least when I was studying. You know, doing well, hair I think and it's the else. whole instant gratification. You know? Yeah, like you can do like on trend right now like if you look at Instagram like the like insta famous makeup artists you know like there's like the ones at the top they're really like good at what they do and and they really do beautiful work and they have to come up with new material and everything but like if you look at like the low you know it's just it's not it's not what makeup should look like makeup shouldn't look like there there's a niche for drags like drag makeup yeah. and it's really super technical and ext- it, it's like it's mind blowing how like perfect the the precision is, yeah. but it's just very different to like everyday natural makeup. And a lot of these insta famous girls are doing, or boys both actually. Sorry to say that, um, you know, are just living off this like cut crease liner, heavy contour, big thick drawn on brows. You know, and that's and that's a trend, yeah. and that's a trend for right now. But in ten years time, that's not going to be a trend out. anymore. Yeah. And so you can't 
put yourself and say, well, I, I, I do makeup because I can do a killer, cut, like, cut crease. Yeah. Because, you know, that's not, if you look in the fashion magazines, it, like, that's not what's in there. Yeah. It's all, it's dewy skin and fresh and, you know, minimal. It's And it's focusing more on what the model looks like. It's not this caked on foundation that you just can't even let your skin breathe. Like, people, that is yeah. just. I mean, people like the shock value of things is really what it is. Like, things yeah. that really, like, stand up, whether it's, a, for photography-wise, it's whether it's a naked body. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That you know, whether it's artistically done or not, or it's um, something like with a painting. Like when I paint, I see what people like. They like, you know, these bright, crazy things. That, I mean, it could be art. That's fine. But yeah, stuff there's nothing that just, wrong like, with that. No, Everyone has not, their own taste. Yeah, yeah but like. it just seems like I don't understand why people don't. You know, there's other artists out there in, in all fields who, you know, they do. So I consider way more amazing. I think other people would as well, but like it's just they seem like you said they follow these trends and these things that mm-hmm. everybody else is doing. They just happen to either have a pretty face themselves that that they put over and they, that that people follow, or I don't know. It's just you're right. The whole Instagram. <laughs> It's yeah, it's and you know, like I'm not going to knock on Instagram at all because no. I've gotten so many great jobs on there, and it's a really great way to network your portfolio. But I'm just meaning, like, in terms of, you know, makeup can be like a hobby or a job. Like, yeah. if you want to make it into a hobby and and just do cut creases and like, you know, live off your highlight and all of that. But you know, for longevity, that's not what you have. No. Like, what you're doing. Like, even though that that is a skill, but not on yourself. Like, it's yeah. not. It's not a. It is a skill, but it's just—it's a completely different skill to do it on other people. Yeah, and just you just have to practice on other people. Like there was a girl in our class who didn't have any eyebrows because she uh, would pluck, pull them out. Like a nervous thing. Yeah. Okay. And so it was a great opportunity for us to learn how to draw brows from scratch every time that you, we, we would have to work on her. And so that. Like I don't, I like I, I have brows, so I would have never have, have, have come across that opportunity. Yeah. So it's just, it's honestly just working on different faces and not working on yourself all the time. And so, yeah. what is your Instagram while you're here, so you can advertise? Oh, okay. Because uh, it is, you do have amazing work. I mean, I know I just met you today. You, you know, on the shoot, you know, shooting today, and but when I got a chance to look at your stuff, I really, I mean, even though I just quickly did it, you could tell. That's how I tell. Like when I flip through magazines, the, whatever makes me stop. You know, that's how I know it's what it is. You know, and what that means it stands up with you is I could just keep stopping my thumb. It was it, it was amazing. I to me it was. And I don't I don't say that a lot about people. I really That don't. really means a you lot. Know, like because, and I know you're not a bullshitter. And like, so. it stands out. Like that's the thing. You just scroll through it real quick. You can literally see different spots of shit standing out. And that's what really makes a difference to me. Like I try to make my own Instagram look like that in a, in a sense, you know what I mean? But I know I have my own personal way of, of, of Everyone's got their style. Yeah. yeah. You know, but you as a soul, you are very versatile in what you do. You do it very, very well. And you, it, it was fun being around you. You weren't, you're fucking assholes to work with. You know what I mean? Some people, and they're like, you're not. You know, you're real. And like, that's what makes it different and what makes people who enjoy doing what they're doing different from other people mm-hmm. who do it. You know, I, I think at least. Because some people who do do it for money or for fame or whatever else are assholes. You know, they forgot why they got into it to begin with. Yeah, no, you know? I definitely. Uh, well, thank, thank you so much. That that that's really sweet. Um, but honest. I've definitely worked with other people that are just ruthless, and you know, I I'm really working on not taking things to heart because at the end of the day, everyone's got to do their job. Yeah. And you know, I can't be like, well, you said it in that tone, and it hurt my feelings. Like it's, it, I'm I'm 28 years old. Like I've got to like, <laughs> you know, I've got to move on and be like. Yeah. I don't care, like, what, you know, I just, I, and I, I find that my, like, you know, I feel like I'm much more mature now than I was, you know, 10 years ago, and I feel like 10 years, 10 years ago, Francesca would have shit her pants. If yeah. I would have said something <laughs> like that, you know? Right. Like, no, it's, oh, I'm sorry, you, say, oh, say Instagram swear? again. No, no, you can okay. swear all you want, fuck, I don't care. <laughs> Seriously, if I didn't swear, it wouldn't be a good show. <laughs> Trust me, when you get my buddy and I actually do interviews together, it'll be all a shit show. All right, say your Instagram before I forget. Okay, so it's Francesca Martin. Dot makeup, and it's kind of funny to say with the American accent, but it's F R A N C E S C A, so Francesca, and then Martin M A R T I N. Martin. Because if I say Martin, they're like, eh? No, I say Martin too. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, actually, that, that's so funny because people have asked me if I'm from Boston, which like now that I've heard you speak today, like I can hear kind of like like the way that you say water is the same way I say water. 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 Yeah. Water. Water. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, because well, yeah. well, it all comes from the same same you know. Old England, I call it. Oh, I'm yeah. from New England. You know? 
<laughs> so it all comes from yeah. comes from old thing. We, we there are certain letters that we forget in ways that we say things. Except you have a twang, I have a twang, and mm-hmm. you know, in different sections of you know England have twang. So I mean, it all becomes down to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, international? No. <laughs> Di- dialect? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Well, yeah, so every place has their own. You know, yeah. you're just across the waterway from Australia, but you sound different. Yeah. You know, so, like, people get to fucking understand the accents a lot more. Yeah, so it's Francesca Martin uh, dot makeup, or period makeup, I guess. A period makeup? That sounds say, horrible. I'm sorry. Oh, that sounds gross. Oh, no, well, that... <laughs> They're like, oh, they get that, too? See, that's another thing they're going to look up, period makeup. Well, you know... When you get pimples and stuff, you mean? I know. I was... No. Because <laughs> I feel like if I said dark, people would be like, what? Because American... I don't know. Okay. Well, also, period makeup also is like Elizabethan it. time, the 60s, 70s, 80s, which also people should be researching as well. Ah, that's true. That, is, yeah. that, that, that does make a lot of sense. Well, oh, also, I, I know you have to go, and I've taken up a lot of your time. No, no, no. I've Dina, just explain, like, in, like... A minute, how how it is working with this lovely um, woman? Because that's just I actually just met you today too. But anyway, <laughs> you know, you I was very happy and glad you brought her with you um, because it was it was it was a fun little day. Yeah. But explain what it is. What initially you saw in her on Instagram that wanted you to connect with her? I mean, the way she does makeup, it's not how, you know, the insta-famous people who do makeup. It's, like, very caked on. The people don't end up looking like themselves. And I saw that she was very real and raw, but still beautiful in the way that she did her makeup. And I was like, okay, that's the girl. So I called her up for the Shubal. I DM'd her on Instagram. You know, she, she slid right in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> real smooth. And, you know, she came. Wait, what was the first shoot we did today? It was the it was the the one in Antelope Valley. No way. Yeah. Oh damn. Okay. So that shoot that was, was kind of like a shit show from start to finish, yeah. but the end result was beautiful. And she having somebody be in like a heightened position like that on a shoot and on a set and she was involved in it and like she kind of like went with the punches. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. And she still stayed very calm, and the end result was still beautiful. So for her, she's a ride or die for me. So I'm going to call her oh. like, at the end of the day for like anything. You know, That's if awesome. she can handle oh, that, like yeah. that you can handle anything. Awesome. Well, yeah. good. That's really oh, gone. Yeah. It's such a big lovey, all oh, the hugging. It's a big lovey circle. This is fantastic. <laughs> Jesus, it turned into a kumbaya section. Yeah. Session. Oh, I awesome. fell in the love. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can sing. No, I can't. Sing. <laughs> I don't think any of us can. No, uh, we'll can. just not find out either. Um, well, anyway, I would say thank you very much for doing this for me. Thank you, you so know? much. And I'm glad I heard your story, and I'm glad that, like, you know, I, I learned a lot, and, you know, and it's a fantastic thing doing what you love, and that's what, you know, made it so much better for me today as well. Yeah. You know, because knowing that you weren't just here just because you had time on your hands, it was because you, no. you love doing what you do. I do, and like, you know, it was in Sister Act, she said it, like, the, if you wake up and the first thing you think about is makeup and the last thing you think about is makeup, oh, you know, sp- sp- specific to what you do. Yeah. And honestly, the last thing when I go to sleep is, like, I'm thinking about, like, oh, that job I did today, how could I have made it better? And I, I'm really, like, and when I wake up, I just, I crave that creativeness, and so that's how I know that this is what I should be doing. And I think it's what you should be doing, too. Despite what your father might think, what you're going to do after, you don't have a plan B. <laughs> no, I you know, don't you have don't, a plan You're B. not going to need a plan B. You keep doing what you're doing, hustling like you're hustling. You know, I think you'll do perfectly fine. And I'm going to say I'm proud of it that, you know, one day that, you know, I already am proud that I work with you, but I'm gonna be, I'll be more proud I'm sure in the future, Thank you know, you. if you That's keep doing what you're sweet. doing seriously, you know, so awesome. Well, it was great. I lost five minutes of the interview at one point. Thank God I used my backup phone because I didn't, re- oh, I didn't realize good. it was already 30 minutes went by. Damn. Really? Yeah, it's been. Oh my gosh. 37 <gasps> minutes. That, I honestly thought it would have been like 10 minutes. I know. So quickly. Yeah, see? I, maybe that's like, like really good at interviews, by the really? way. Really? The there's no like pausing. You just know what to say. So props to you. Yeah. yeah like that, I, I didn't have to ask to say a lot because usually I have to carry the yeah. type of stuff and I didn't. I felt like I was very repetitive. Mm-hmm. No, you were. not at all. You had some really good answers. Thank you so much. That's why I told you the questions before. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though. Thank you so, thank so, you much. so much. We'll take a selfie. Yes. Yeah. We some untamed beasts in the cage with all the answers. They pay a fee to see us.
I swing from branches, wildlife in every stanza. Those who don't love misunderstand us like Aborigine bush dancers. It's all about the vibe, the vibe you damn right. Master ceremonies round the campsite, throw a log on the flame. Communicate thoughts that only the stars could explain. Critics never do us justice, call us primitive and good for nothing. Cause we're man enough to do the hunting, chop the hand on the panic button. Come on! Now this is cutthroat music, motherfucker. All right, welcome back, folks. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I, that should, excuse me. That is one of my favorite uh, interviews. Uh, just because, like I said, makeup is really, really interesting to me, and always has been. And oops, her story is very, fam- you know, familiar. I think for most of most of us creatives, it's very familiar because we all want to do something creative, but we all know how difficult. It is to be creative and make money at it. It's not easy. It's a struggle. It's a, it can be a many year struggle. We can luck out. It can be you know a very short struggle, but it, it is a struggle nonetheless. Because um, because you got to constantly try to find ways to keep reinventing yourselves and doing things. So a we don't get bored. And B we, you know, to stay at the uh, you know the top of our own game, you know as well. But um, yeah. So I mean, I, if in, if you listen to Dina's interview, her story is very similar as well. You know, I was basically telling. <laughs> it's basically you know the, I think the push comes to show is telling our parents, "Screw, we're gonna do it," you know, and to hope they'd support us emotionally, you know. And my parents have. My parents have been really done really well with me. They gave up on the fact many years ago that I wasn't gonna do anything per norm, and and they're fine with that. They <laughs> so you know, and it's worked out well for me and. So much and so forth. So, I think that should be, I think that should be our lesson for the for the week. The, just for the simple fact, the idea that oh, I'm gonna turn my water up. For, just for the simple idea that we can, if we really, you know, they, they always say if you want to do something, you know, and, and you can do anything you want, and blah blah blah. The thing is, we can. You know, we all know that it's not even it's nothing. It's nothing we even you, it's even questioned anymore. The problem is, is that when you're growing up. Is convincing your 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 friends, family, and whatnot, mostly your family, that it's something worth you know worth doing and attempting. And I don't know where it comes from where people tell you you know oh you should do this, you shouldn't do that, blah blah. Why? Why? I mean, if it's ruining your life, yeah, obviously you shouldn't. But you should always find a space for it, regardless of what it is. If it's something you love but you're not doing it for work, you know you should still keep doing what you love because if you don't. Then you're gonna fucking it, your life's gonna suck, you know. But if you can find it and you figure out a way to make it work for you, especially if you're young when you're you're not tied down to anything yet, you should go for it. That's the time to go for go for it, you know. And you gotta convince your parents that you can do that. But the only way that it's not just about convincing your, your parents, but it's also about convincing yourself that it's worthwhile and keeping that push going, is if you because we can't get discouraged, and is if you just keep going for it and find the reasons why you're doing it. You know, if you keep, like, I have up and down moments. You know, I have times when I'm really busy. I have times when I ain't doing shit. You know, like I said, that's part of the reason why I keep a steady job, just because I always want to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to fall underneath. And, um, and, you know, it's always good to have supplemental income anyway. You know, I mean, photographers, famous photographers are all known for having supplemental income when it was, like... Who I can't remember. Like some would just literally the, their money jobs, the art that they were known for didn't pay, but their other jobs paid. Like they would take pictures of like toothpaste tubes and things in that line, or cigarette packs, and they would just they would have those counts that they would just do consistently that paid, so they could do their other things, you know. And you can do that as well. I mean, it's not uncommon to do that. You know, to make it big and, you know, they have all these licensing agreements and things like that is obviously what our, all our goal is and everything else. But, you know, I mean, that's a small percentage. It's like the professional athlete versus, you know, the amateur athlete. You know, amateur athletes, well, you, you, people play basketball until, you know, until they can't walk anymore because, you know, it, it, they just, they're, because they love doing it. It was the same thing here is that you got to keep doing it and not get discouraged and realize that you, you can only make it. If you keep pushing yourself and putting yourself in front of the right set of eyes to see your work. So, I mean, if something's not working out, you're going to sit down and ask yourself, how can I make this work? How is How am I going to be become, um, 
what it is that whatever it is that you want to become. You know, so you know that's why you can't be one dimensional either. You can't just say I'm just going to do you know take pictures of dogs or just going to do weddings or just going to do this or just going to do that or just going to paint this or whatever. You got to be multifaceted. You know, Dean is multifaceted. When you listen to her, uh, Francesca is multifaceted. You know, she did the special effects makeup and stuff and all the, uh, you know and everything else. So there's different. You could still do the same thing, but there's different ways to do it. Like me, like I can do. Sports photography was my big thing for a while, and because I, I loved it anyway. But it wasn't creative or artistic. I mean, it can be, but you can get amazing shots. You know, it's a good release for me. You know, and a good way to supplement my income. You know, photographers, the senior portraits are a great way to supplement your income, and along those lines, so the and family portraits and such like that. Um, you know, so those are the but those are the things. Like you know, it's, the thing is, I'm still taking pictures. I'm still doing what I love doing. The bottom line. You know, but I'm not doing the exact projects I want to do, you know, but it, it, it gets there, you know, but you have to keep working at what you're doing. You have to prove to yourself and prove to your parents, you know, that it's worth it, a worthwhile endeavor because we do need that support. You know, I mean, for years I struggled with my parents supporting me, you know, cause, or not even not, not, not supporting me. I, I, I checked that, you know, they always supported, they always supported me, but understanding is what it is. People who aren't creative or who who aren't familiar with what it is that you're doing, regardless of what it is. It's hard to get them to understand, and sometimes it's not about understanding, you know, the the exact product. Sometimes it's just simply about understanding the the outcome of that product, your happiness, your income, or whatever it is. You know, and that's what we get to show that it is worthwhile, and they got to learn too, you know. So, I mean, it's a struggle that we're all going to go through, and... It's just part of, it's the nature of the beast when being creative. But the thing is, you got to keep pushing and you got to do it. Fuck what other people say, you know, or whatever else. Because, I mean, I've even seen, seen and heard of relationships, like private relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, whatever. They, um, the relationship's not working out because someone won't support somebody else's endeavor. And I think that's so fucking wrong and so bad. You know, like, I, one thing, I swore this up and down, even since I was a teenager, I would never hold, like, my high school girlfriend, I'd never hold her back if she wanted to go somewhere, because I wanted to leave. You know, we obviously, we didn't last long enough anyway, well, you know, through my senior year anyway, but I always knew I wanted to leave and go somewhere else, just to explore somewhere else and go somewhere. You know, and she didn't really understand that idea, and I was just like, I would never hold anybody, and as much as I cared for somebody, whatever else, I would never hold them back from doing what they wanted to do. And, and or, or whether even if I understood it or not, you know what I mean. I'd find a, a way to support them, and I do that. I try to do that with my friends, and people that I, I care about and that I believe in. You know, the hard part is is that a lot of people can come up with things that you know you believe in, and you believe in them, but you don't believe in themselves, and that's where your part comes in. Does you got to be and support them, and that's what we look for. We look for the support. We look for somebody who can sit there and be like, yeah, you know, I, I, go for it. Whatever, you know what I mean. Whatever I can do to assist you, then I will do, and that's what I try to do as well. And that's what, like I said, we're all looking for. I, mean, I've got, I get a lot of support from my friends and always have. I've been extremely fortunate to have a great circle of um, people around me who've never questioned what I do in, in, in a bad way, you know, and have always appreciated it and um, kind of, excuse me, I guess admired it or whatever. And some people have found themselves, older people, older friends, have living vicariously through me. Other ones just don't care and they listen, you know, and they think it's, a, it's great whatever you do and whatnot. So... You know, it's, it's your only, you know, you need to surround yourself with great people and who, can, who will do that for you and, and keep you motivated because it's so, so, so important to, 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 to do that and to not give up on what it is that you want to do despite how hard it is and to make a buck at it at first and whatever else. But I mean, once, you know, Francesca's building credit and that's very, that's the most important in this, in, in such a visual world by being in magazines and stuff like that. that's not the stuff that necessarily pays either people got to realize that it's, it's it's magazines are there to give you credit you know and get you more work you know but you can build off of that if you wanted to educate like i eventually want to open up a school like a small school you know teach painting classes and photography and it's just it, i just don't think i can do it around here but it's something that's on my mind that I really just want to end up doing. I want a space that's big enough that it's affordable and worthwhile because I don't want to charge people a fortune for some for something just because they have to pay rent because in Boston it's so fucking expensive. I think it's ridiculous. You know, but it's something I want to do. You know, and it's a matter of, uh, like, if you have those credits and people recognize your work or you can say your work was here, 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 and here, then, you know, it, you're going to... People are going to respect that. 
You know, like I don't put my credits up. I don't talk about my credits. And my credit, you either recognize my work or you don't. People ask, I will tell them. But I'm not big on that myself, you know. So if that matters to somebody, they will ask. You know, if they just like your work for what it is, and then they know, great. You know, and they'll fall suit and whatever else and learn. So, um, but I know I have a lot of younger um, admirers and listeners who are just starting out and. You know, they have a lot of great ideas. I've seen a lot of their work and stuff. They just know what they don't know yet about how to go about doing anything with it. And they get in panic mode because nowadays everybody feels like it has to be done now. That by 25, you're going to be here, 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 and here. You know, and you know, it might not happen by the time you're 25. It might happen before that. It might happen right when you're 25. It might happen way after that. You know, but it's a, like I said, everything's timing and putting yourself in its place. And you've got to find the opportunities. And that's the key point. So recognize opportunities. And if you let opportunities pass, no matter what it is, you're screwed. You know, and you might not even be ready for some of these opportunities. But you know what? Go out and do them anyway. If someone's going to give you a shot, fucking take it. If you don't take that shot, I've turned down tons of opportunities, whether it's just to meet people, build relationships with people. Um, business situations or whatnot. I've turned down so many of them because I a didn't follow through and I didn't believe in myself, more, or b I didn't believe them. You know, but mostly it was because I didn't believe in myself, and I was self conscious and afraid. You know, I, I and I learned over the years I actually have a, a, a you know certain fears or about um, certain aspects of uh, success. You know, and I had to get over it and realize that. You know, because when I look around and I see people with half the talent that I had making money and doing things, I'd, I'd realize, like, that's bullshit. And there's people who way, have way more talent than I do who don't realize it and make shit and vice versa. You know, so I had to realize that if I didn't go out there and say and, and fuck up, as long as it wasn't somebody who could ruin my reputation, then I didn't give a shit. And I don't give a shit. You know, because I have my way of working about things and doing things. And if they came to me for what I what I'm, I, I can do, what I'm capable of, and there's proof in that, and they saw that, then I'm going to go for it. If it's somebody who has, has a very high stature in whatever field it is, <coughs> excuse me, and they see something in me, you know, then great. You know, um, that means they saw something in me, and they're going to trust my process. And that's what it is. It's all about your process when it comes to this stuff. And I, there's nothing to be nervous about. You know, you go in, you, do people like it or they don't? You're always going to be in that position when, in, in the creative field of, of trying to figure out whether people like what you're doing or, the, or not like what you're doing. You know, so just keep going for it and keep doing it, and then there's no problem with it. You know, so that's my, my input on all that. So um, up next is the inevitable ugly person of the week. I have a very special one this week. It's, it's someone who's very close to me. <laughs> So we'll be right back with the ugly person of the week. Okay, welcome back to the... Why is it cut like... What the fuck did I do? I don't know, whatever. I'm going to fix that clip. Anyway, so welcome to the final section of the show, the ugly person of the week. Um, okay, I could really obviously. I think there's an obvious uh, ugly person of the week, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to give that piece of shit satisfaction of <sighs> I do my little part of of notoriety because I think that's what psychos do stupid shit for. Um, but my ugly person of the week is Mr. Handsome. Mr. Handsome is my dog, also known as General. General is a Chinese crested. He's a fun-loving, very affectionate fucking dog. But that motherfucker, all right. I take him outside, and I get to, I got bonked the Chihuahua as well. So they go, they they go out. I, I, not, it snowed today, so all over the night, overnight, and so I snow blow my backyard in the route that they take when they take a shit, in their potty route. So basically, it's like straight line to the yard. And I make a loop around my gazebo and come back, and there it is. It just looks like a big giant pee from the sky, and um. So anyway, so they're very limited to actually where they can go, but that's fine. It kind of just forces them to go do their business and come back when it's freezing cold out. They don't want to be out there anyway. So they're back there, and General does this every... I don't know, I don't know whose fault it is. I, I, sometimes I think it's Bonk's fault. Sometimes I think it's General's fault. But General, well, Bonk's taking a shit, and General has this thing. And I don't know if they both do. It's mostly General. It's like if Bonk takes a shit, he's got to piss on it. So it's like it's its own. It's like, nope, that ain't your shit. That's my shit. Why dogs got to take stake claim and the other dog's shit is beyond me. I mean, these two, they still, I, I didn't get them neutered because I don't believe in cutting the nuts off of things. And they don't meet female dogs, so they ain't going to fucking, fucking pre-produce. Um, 
they're, they're constantly, they'll find one, whoever pisses first, the other one will come along and piss over it. So a barn pisses somewhere, general will come along right behind him and piss over it. And it just becomes this ongoing circle of um, piss, and it's literally the same, within the same three inches of each other. It's ridiculous. So general has to piss on Bonk's shit. So rather than waiting for Bonk to finish taking a shit because there's very limited area, I guess, to, to walk around, general starts pissing on top of Bonk. Why the fuck do you get a piss on Bonk? I mean, there's been a couple of times I've seen Bonk walk under the general because he's, whatever, a little smaller so he can fit. And, like, Bonk is literally just getting pissed on. I don't know if he has a fetish for this because Bonk is pretty gay for, for the general. And that's fine. Gay chihuahuas don't bother me, you know? But why the fuck can't you just wait for the goddamn dog to wait to take a fucking shit? Before you piss on him. So now Bonk smells like piss. I'm going to pick him up because he can't run up the stairs because the sta there's too many stairs in my house. And he's now he's a chihuahua that smells like piss. So what do I going to do? I got to rinse him under the fucking sink. And he doesn't, he's not fond of showers. He doesn't like the water. But he, did, he, he tolerates it. He's fine. I just, so I hold him. I rinse him under the water. Get some hand soap real quick, you know, to, to get the fucking the smell out of there. You know, he dries pretty quick, so I just dry him off real quick, and I throw some powder on him, call it a day. But, I mean, well, it's like, why? Why? General, why? Not that you're going to listen to this, General. But I love you. Like I said, you're a fun-loving dog. But, for Christ's sake, stop pissing on your brother, please. So, anyway, so my ugly person of the week is an actually person. It's my fucking dog. And so, fuck him. But, um... I was going to say, so, uh, yeah, so that's it. That's episode eight. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget that uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always email me at soul at soulcriminal.com or message me on Instagram, and I'll always get back to you. If anybody all got some music or whatnot you want me to play or you're in a band or whatnot, then you can forward me that too, and I will play that. Um, and, and once again, folks, remember we are all ugly on the inside. Nope, I gotta cancel that. We're all ugly in some way, <laughs> but it's how we handle that ugly that makes us all beautiful. So until next week, it's co-host week. I uh, I will um, talk to you then and have a wonderful fucking week. All right, see y'all, motherfuckers. <laughs> Check mark flow over see y'all 2020 with the visions that you never see y'all